STV, votre télé. Today, September 20, 2017, marks exactly 57 years Cameroon got admitted into the UN General Assembly. What has been the romance between the two parties this far? Find out in this newscast. Plus, construction works at the Japoma Sports Complex here in Douala is rated at 20% as at now, with the Turkish government reaffirming her support to see the project completed before the start of the 2019 AFCON in Cameroon. Those are my top stories, ladies and gentlemen. I am Henry Wana at the anchor in Douala. Murat Oku, the Turkish ambassador to Cameroon, has reaffirmed Cameroonians that the Japoma Sports Complex will be ready ahead of the 2019 AFCON in Cameroon. He was speaking today at the construction site in Japoma here in Douala. Philemon Bale was with him and our reports. Now, the Japama Stadium, the, the progress is around 20%. Just 20% completion rate this far for a mega structure to host games during the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon. The Turks are confident that the stadium will be ready in time ahead of the showpiece. The, the mo most uh, hardest part is the deal with the groundworks. Now, we almost completed the groundworks. After completing the groundworks, you will see that it's go very fast. The Turkish ambassador to Cameroon led a delegation that paid a visit to the site at Japoma. My visit is not directly related to this debate, as I uh, just said in French. Uh, we understand the, 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 the polemics uh, going on around this issue of hosting uh, the tournament. Uh, it's not up to us to pronounce a judgment on that, but from our perspective, it goes without saying that, you know, since we are here cooperating tightly with the government of Cameroon in the context of the construction of the Japoma Stadium, we have no doubt about uh, the, the, uh, the, the diligent administration shown by uh, Cameroon. On to be a little more specific about the Japoma project, it's more than just a football stadium. We have 50,000 people capacity study and one Olympic swimming pool and one multi-purpose support hall is closed with the roof and two training fields, this is for the football games, and uh, four tennis fields and two basketball fields and two other uh, fields uh, we are going to uh, establish. Once the foundation work is completed, the rest of the work will be to mount the other imported components of the sports complex. Like you heard from our lead story, that today, September 20, 2017, marks exactly 57 years Cameroon got admitted into the UN General Assembly. Record shows that the two parties have been enjoying fruitful cooperation ties. John Paul Sama looks at this long-standing relationship between Cameroon and the UN General Assembly. September 20, 1960, Cameroon is admitted into the General Assembly of the United Nations. 57 years down the line, the country has enjoyed a smooth working relationship with the international body and in the process taken part in all of its General Assemblies since then. The country has opened its doors to the various arms of the United Nations. One of the major outcomes of this relationship was the peaceful resolution of the Bakasi crisis through the signing of the Green Tree Accord under the supervision of the then UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. The international body has also helped Cameroon and its neighbors in the combat against Islamic sect Boko Haram with the provision of a peacekeeping mission to the affected regions. This 57-year-old relationship with the UN today has also seen the organization coming in to resolve and check issues of human rights violations in Cameroon, and especially with the Anglophone crisis, as the United Nations made several calls for investigations on the allegation of human rights violations on claims that the government used excessive force during the 8th December 2016 protests in Bamenda. They did not only end at that, 
As they went further to call for the release of detainees in connection with the Anglophone crisis for proper dialogue and peace to reign. The international body could not stay silent when the two English-speaking zones were deprived of internet services with the special representative of the Secretary General for Central Africa in a four-day official visit call on the government to re-examine the situation. The bilateral relationship with the United Nations has also seen aid from the world's body with refugee crisis in Cameroon and the country hosts several branches of the body's arm. With these benefits the country has enjoyed, the World Food Programme, with its country's strategic plan to be implemented in Cameroon from 2018 to 2020, will help the country achieve zero hunger and they will also work with the Cameroon government to establish the long-term intervention to improve the resilience of vulnerable communities in the far north, north and Adamawa regions. With Cameroon currently taking part at the 72nd UN General Assembly in New York, that win-win relationship could last for a while. Cameroonian political scientists have been expressing their diverse views about the opening speech of U.S. President, US President Donald Trump at the opening 72nd UN General Assembly in New York. Larinetta Page sought their views and packaged the following reports for us. For the first time as President of the United States of America, Donald Trump has mounted the rush room of the 72nd UN General Assembly in which he delivered a speech that has attracted several comments and analysis from national and international experts. Amongst abundant statements, he has called on leaders to protect their nations, the interests and future of citizens, as well as reject threats to the nation's sovereignty in Cameroon. Some citizens, especially from the English-speaking regions, have voiced certain interests which some government leaders have considered as threats to national unity. For these political scientists, the call of Donald Trump can be analyzed in a Cameroonian context. Our president, President Beer, being in that audience, uh, I mean, he was telling him and the other world leaders that were there that uh, I will encourage you to work for your people and not against your people. Because if you work against your people, uh, you're not going to have me. Because if you work against your people, it means you're working against the sovereignty of, of against sovereignty. Because sovereignty simply means the capacity of the people to do without intimidation, without fear from our side. The righteous many should confront the wicked few who are terrorizing our borders. These words of Donald Trump have been considered as words of comfort to Cameroon in her fight against Boko Haram and other insecurity threats. The statement of President Trump uh, is in support of the actions that President Bia and the others have been taking against this Boko Haram, uh, Boko Haram uh, uh, terrorist uh, danger. The Boko Haram terrorism is a wicked uh, act, wicked aggression against the sovereignty of a people. It's pretty soothing, pretty encouraging, and I think that the, the President Bia and his colleagues would take a lot of uh, a lot of solace. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, as far as that uh, statement is concerned, uh, if I were there, they should come closer. That should bring them closer to President Trump. U.S. President has also assured the world of America's friendship, especially to its allies. Donald Trump's September 19 speech also made the General Assembly of the United Nations know his stance concerning North Korea. The 33rd meeting of the Intergovernmental Committee of Experts, scheduled to take place in Douala from the 26th to the 29th, is expected to be an avenue for the experts to take a critical look at the barriers hindering industrialization in Central Africa and propose concrete solutions. Larineta Page with a preview of that meeting. Going by the director of the Central African Office of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, Antonio Pedro, a successful industrial policy for Africa requires a government that has its root in society but also the power to chart and implement its way forward. Without a deliberate strategy to promote industrial development, African countries will find themselves locked in a state of low productive capabilities. The region is going through a macroeconomic instability which has, was triggered by the fall in commodity prices, especially oil. But it extends also to um, 
cacao, and so on and so forth. So it is it's a very important agenda. It's an existential issue. Despite identified challenges to industrialization, particularly in the Central African sub-region, concrete actions can be taken. The need to uh, create a one-stop uh, shop, as it were, or one-stop facility uh, to address the uh, uh, infrastructure uh, and other uh, factors that are impeding Central Africa from becoming uh, competitive. We believe that uh, by mobilizing uh, all the stakeholders in the region to um, formulate an agreed uh, strategy uh, to achieve that, we will be then contributing to the decisions of the uh, heads of state of CEMAC. The whole idea of experts of the Intergovernmental Committee who will be meeting from the 26th to the 29th of September 2017 in Douala for their 33rd meeting is to promote made in Central African goods and increase the economic growth of the sub-region. The Minister of State at the Ministry of Public Works in charge of transport was in Douala today to hand over seafaring logistics to the Douala Poor Authority. The four boats are to be used to secure Cameroon waters and boost the activities of the Douala Sea Poor. Veronica Aji now reports. Emergence, one of the boats handed over to the Port Authority of Douala, is 15.32 meters long, 4.47 meters large, and can carry along eight persons. The seafaring equipment alongside three others handed over to the Director General of the Douala Autonomous Port Wednesday have as primary objective securing Cameroon waters. In this project we have uh, previewed uh, some equipment for uh, the management of the seaport and then now today we gave uh, uh, three uh, equipments uh, for navigation in order to uh, enable the port the seaport of douala to assure the security of the uh, zone you know that we have uh, the, the, we, we have we are threatened by the uh, banditism and uh, terrorism now, and the port of Douala, the seaport of Douala, is a port, uh, a door for those youths to uh, attack Cameroon, and I think that it was necessary for us, and it's, this is just a contribution to have the support of Douala to uh, enhance the security of the zone. Thank you. During the official handover ceremony, the Secretary of State at the Ministry of Public Works in charge of transport said the government initiative is part of the Vision 2035 objectives. We have here a large project that includes a road uh, construction and rehabilitation uh, to enable our neighbor uh, countries uh, Chad and uh, uh, IRC to um, uh, transport their goods easily in the sub region. Then you have a second part that's the one of uh, the facilitation of uh, the transit operations here in the port of Douala. The project co-financed by the Cameroon government and the World Bank amounts to 970 million 816,360 CFA francs. Developing means of transport, better use of logistics, safety and security are the areas to be considered because they are keys to the modernization of the Douala seaport. With the maritime sector, which has become increasingly demanding, diversion of activities demands strategic measures not only to raise services accepted at international standards, but also to make them more attractive and competitive. 
Trade unions of the transport sector have requested for a drop in oil prices in Cameroon despite the fluctuation in the international market. They were speaking today in Yaoundé during a meeting with Trade and Commerce Minister. From Yaoundé, Milani Ndilon reports. The price of petrol should be reduced. This is the plea of trade unionists who are not happy with the reforms in the petrol sector without their consent. For more than two years, these trade unionists have not been able to communicate sufficiently with government officials concerning the fluctuation of petrol in the world market. These plights have justified the presence of transport stakeholders at the Ministry of Trade this September 20th. The spirit of uh, partnership, the dialogue, we need to dialogue. There is no winner, no loser. We had to work together because uh, we have to build our country together. And I am very happy of this. Uh, it was very, very positive, very constructive. And uh, I want to really congratulate, to thank the trade union for the, this spirit, very positive spirit. Transporters who are the first consumers of petrol are partners to come on government and not rivals pertaining to some transporters. Le gouvernement soutient les syndicats. On est clair là-dessus aujourd'hui. Il ne faut pas qu'on nous appelle demain. He says, because they come to give 100,000 today or 200,000 tomorrow does not mean the situation is okay. Before decisions are being made, they should be considered, and with this, there will be no need for any strike action. Nous les encadrons sur le plan du travail, mais on n'a pas de retour d'ascenseur. Meanwhile, the strike action previewed for September 27, 2017 by trade unionists of the transport sector has been suspended, hoping to have remarkable feedback from the government on the complaints tabled by the trade Nigerians resident in Boya have been called upon to remain law-abiding to the Cameroonian laws. The call was made by the Nigerian Consulate General to Cameroon while on a contact tour to that part of the republic. From Boya, Ekowe Clarice reports. After his tour to Kumba, Manfe and Baminda aim at knowing the living conditions of Nigerians, here is Ambassador Mohamed Arzika on another visit to Boya as he begins his journey by paying a courtesy visit to Chief Etina Monono of Great Support Chiefdom, where he earned himself an honorable title, Mula Sombe, meaning a star from the chief. Making his entry to the chief's palace was a warm welcome by Chief Monono and other choir and dance groups thrilling on Lucas with their dance steps. The visit by the Nigerian ambassador to Cameroon served as an avenue for Nigerians living in this part of Boya to pour out their problems. We we'll thank him for coming. The message that we uh, like to tell him is that as he has come, he has to work with us, at least know us, know our problems, and know how he can tackle it. However, present to address the plight of Nigerians, Ambassador Mohamed Arzika, nevertheless, didn't hesitate to appreciate and express gratitude to the Cameroon government and the chief of Great for hospitality towards the Nigerians. See, honestly, it was uh, beyond my imagination. I thought of coming to pay respect to the, His Excellency uh, Chief Monono and his cabinet to show gratitude uh, in which uh, how our people got to live in peace and harmony. Meanwhile, Chief Monono of Great Support paints a positive picture of Nigerians in his area of jurisdiction. In fact, it is very rare for me as a chief of 22,000 people, which includes Nigerians, to ever get a problem, to have a problem from any of the Nigerians because they solve their problems amicably. They, they are very, very kind and hard-working people, so much so that it only fosters the relationship we have between Nigeria and Cameroon. While concluding his tour, the Nigerian ambassador to Cameroon urged Nigerians in Boya to remain law-abiding by so doing, keep a strong Cameroon-Nigerian bilateral relationship. 
The sum of close to 2 billion francs CFA has been adopted as the budget of the Douala for Council after a heated council session today with councillors of the SDF party accusing the mayor for embezzlement and the neglect of the worries of the population. Darlene Feger reports. Floods, stagnant water and degraded roads are some of the daily realities of inhabitants of Mabanda and Katutash in the Douala for municipality. Movement in and out is a nightmare, especially during this wet season. They just renovated Chico Alaji Road here in Mabanda. It's inaccessible. The new star and Bello Roads are in a deplorable state. A similar situation to that of Renovation and Catetage. Accusing fingers are pointing at the mayor of Douala 4 municipality for the means of the population who are forced to embrace the consequence of poor road infrastructures. Councillors of the Social Democratic Front Party have also charged the mayor for embezzling council funds of over 190 million CFA funds dedicated to the construction of a council hall and a public garden. Accusations which Mayor Fedorinkom has debunked. He emphasized that multiple actions are being carried out in various neighborhoods of his municipality geared towards the well being of the population. To him, those tarnishing his works are incompetent. L'action de Monsieur le Maire, donc c'est une agitation qui ne sert absolument à. A view shared by the third deputy mayor, Woodobus, as the quarter head of Mabanda. These people. Who have been here in the council for did nothing for that quarter they call Mambanda. They did nothing, absolutely. Any route, any project that was destined for that, either it was half done or was abandoned. Those projects are there, abandoned as they are. If they want that one day, we also go down and see what they did. They should show us what they did in Mambanda. The Mambanda population know them very well. After heated debate this 20th of September during the ordinary council session, the budget of over 20 million was Some university students in Douala have expressed mixed feelings over the arrival of promised laptops by the head of state come November 2017. To them, the announcement from the Minister of Higher Education is comforting, but a little late. Veronica Ajay sampled their views and packaged the following report for us. The promise made in July 2016 will only be a reality come November this year. Assurance given by the Minister of Higher Education, Professor Jacques Famandongo. This announcement comes as a form of reassurance to those university students that had completed the online registration process. On peut constater, nous avons tant attendu ces ordinateurs là. Aujourd'hui, aujourd'hui, on nous dit que les ordinateurs seront là en novembre. Nous sommes satisfaits. This student from the University of Douala believes he is eligible to receive the presidential gift for he has fulfilled all conditions needed. As early as November, a first batch of 80,000 laptops will be received in Cameroon and distributed to students gradually including those enrolled for the 2017-2018 academic year. A good initiative, but not quite the best to some. I am not particularly satisfied with the date at which they have said they will give us the computers. To this young lady, the 2016 promise seems far-fetched to those who had hitherto registered but have graduated from the university. Et les anciens étudiants qui sont là qui ne savent pas s'ils si auront des ordinateurs ou pas. Nevertheless, Prime Minister Philemon Yang has instructed that all necessary measures be taken to realize the presidential promise of donating 500,000 laptops to students of state universities and other higher institutions. Activities leading to World Tourism Day 2017 on September 27 in the littoral region has been launched today by littoral governor Samuel Jolene Ivahadi Boa. Stakeholders of the tourism sector have been encouraged to multiply efforts to make the littoral region a touristic destination. Darlene Feger reports. The littoral region is 
blessed with diverse touristic potentials. The Yaya beaches, Lake Osa, the lakes of Jumo Maninguba, and the waterfalls of Ekumkam are some explicit examples of this touristic wealth. The region can also boast of some 635 operational hotel facilities of all categories, hundreds of travel agencies not living out, entertainment spots such as restaurants, snack bars, cabarets, but more is expected to brandish the image of the Little region to attract more visitors. And uh, we want to, to promote, we want to develop the tourist sites and uh, to develop the partnership between the uh, persons working in this domain. That is our main objective. And uh, we want to give to the littoral region an image which is very, very beautiful uh, because the region is very rich in potentiality and touristic potentialities. Tourism, being the third major sector of exportation in the world after chemistry and fuel, can be a great tool for development. Tourism is a tool for development. It is a major industry in the world which generates a lot of income. So we have to promote the tourism potentials of our region. Launching the regional days of tourism this Wednesday in Douala, in prelude to the celebration of the 38th edition of World Tourism Day, come September 29, the governor of the Little Hour region, Samuel Dudene Ivaha Dibua, called on all stakeholders of the sector to unite forces for the development of tourism in the region and in the country. Let's now get news out of the country with the VOA. The White House reconfirmed Monday the United States is pulling out of the Paris Climate Accord, a decision President Trump announced in June. The Paris Climate Accord is simply the latest example of Washington entering into an agreement that disadvantages the United States to the exclusive benefit of other countries, leaving American workers, who I love, and taxpayers to absorb the cost in terms of lost jobs, lower wages, shuttered factories, and vastly diminished economic production. But at a gathering Monday of city and state leaders on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly in New York, there was a different view. From infrastructure to finance to procurement, the opportunities are endless. This includes expanding transit to include electric buses, as we've seen in the UN climate change host city of Bonn in Germany, or making buildings more efficient by using sustainable material, just as we're seeing in many cities in India. California Governor Jerry Brown said cities and states can still make a profound difference on climate change without Trump administration support. But because our system of check and balance has so many other power centers in business, in states, the influence of other countries, uh, he will not be successful in the direction in which he's going. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio proposes dramatic cuts in greenhouse gas emissions by forcing landlords to upgrade energy systems in old buildings. Once achieved, de Blasio says it would reduce emissions equal to taking 900,000 cars off the road. Daniel Sheriff, VOA News, New York. And that does it for this edition of the newscast on Spectrum Television. Thank you all for your kind attention. See you tomorrow. Good night. SDV, votre télé.